it is now time to style our banner component. But before we start coding, let's take a look at a strategy for styling. We will be using mobile first development. Mobile first approach refers to the practice of designing and developing any online experience for mobile before you do it for any other device that is for desktop or for tablet. It is a strategy that says whenever you create any website or app, you should start sketching and prototyping the smallest screen first if you are a designer and start coding the smallest screen first if you are a developer before you work your way up to the larger screens. It's about delivering the right user experience to the right device. It has gained a lot of popularity over the years as there are an increasing number of mobile users. So by designing and developing for mobile first, you are giving the majority of your users a better experience. In this course, we will be using mobile first development. So how does that change things for us when we are styling? We will be writing styles for a mobile device by default. That is, if I were to go to this specific app, which is already built and shrink the browser size, this is the device size that we would be writing the styling by default. And then we would be setting breakpoints for tablet and for desktop. So let's get started with styling our banner component. Now, since this is a Next.js course, I will be providing all the styling code as part of the resources section attached to this video but I won't be writing any CSS from scratch with you. Although I do recognize that styling is extremely important. So don't worry, I will be walking you through the code. So you have a really good understanding and will be comfortable doing it by yourself. In banner.modular.css, let's go ahead and add the code for the default breakpoint, which is for mobile. So I'm going to copy paste the code. Now, remember, I don't have any media queries yet, but we will add that in a sec. As I do that, you will notice that a lot of the code is related to spacing and font sizes. So let's see it in action in the browser. You can see that the code is already looking better, but the button for some reason has lost its background, but we will get to that in a sec. But at the same time, you will see that the title and subtitle is looking good, but it doesn't necessarily have colors. So let's take a look at our styling code. All right. So we do have something called as var and the name of what appears to look like a color. So we have text black, text purple, text white, text purple dark, and so on. So anything with a variable var is essentially a CSS variable. CSS variables are essentially values. They are variables assigned to those values, which could be used throughout our application. So for example, in our case, colors would be CSS variables because we want to make sure that we add consistent theming to our site. So we can use these CSS variables throughout our application. And we don't want to be repeating the same colors over and over because there are only a subset of colors. So just like in JavaScript, you have variables and you reference them. Similarly in CSS, they would be CSS variables. All right, now that we know what they are, let's go ahead and declare them. Each variable does need to have a value as well. So let's go ahead and add it in a place where it can be available throughout our application. If you do remember in one of the lessons before, we did try out an exercise wherein we added something where it gets added once, but it's available throughout our application. And that spot is underscore app.js. Now in underscore app.js, this is the React code, right? But notice right here on line one, there is something called a styles.global.css. And again, just because this is already imported right here, it is available throughout our application. So we can go ahead and add CSS variables in this file global.css. 
let's add something called as root and declare all the variables right here. So we want to add root whenever we want to reference something that we want to apply to the entire HTML document. So in this case, CSS variables are something we want to apply to all the elements in our app. So we would add it to the root. So I already have the variables handy with me. So I'm going to add it right here. These are all the different colors that we have declared. Now, if I go to the browser again, you will see that the button has a color, so did connoisseur and banner component is already looking a lot better. So now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and add in some more styling. Next, let's take a look at media queries. So by default, we added code that was related to the mobile breakpoint, but there are many other breakpoints that we are targeting. So for example, these are the different breakpoints. I have referenced them as small, medium, large, extra large, and two times extra large device. And the reason for that is so that it becomes easy to remember. But at the same time, we do remember these are the different devices that we are targeting. So for example, this would be the code for all these different breakpoints. Again, all this code does is it is updating the font size accordingly and adding more or less margin so that the font size and the spacing scales as we increase and decrease our browser window. So let's take a look. Now, right here, you can see that the banner component is already looking a lot better and bigger because this is a desktop. But if I shrink, you will see that it has reduced in size. All right. So that's all for styling. Now that we have a good handle on styling, let's take a look at the head component. 